Billy back here. Random Thoughts, Episode 2. This is a solo episode as... I do have friends that are into what I'm talking about, but not... They're not very comfortable with the camera, I don't think. So I'm going to talk about it. Vampire Diaries as a whole. Um, so, Season 1 starts off, and Elena and Jeremy are facing, um, you know, dealing with the death of their parents. There's a car accident. Her, Elena's parents died. Elena survived. And she's scared of cars right now. And she's just going through a lot, and her friend Bonnie is trying to help her and, you know, saying that her grandma's telling her she's psychic. And, you know, Elena meet, bumps into Stefan in the men's restroom, on the way out of the men's restroom, rather, after she yelled at Jeremy for doing drugs and stuff. And, um, you know, Stefan immediately feels attracted to her. And what you find out is that Stefan used to be with a woman called Catherine who looks just like Elena. So it's really weird um, when you're first exposed to this show because the vampires are actually vampires. There's a lot of killing going on. And the lore is really good. And the deeper we get into the show, the better it gets. From that first episode, I had actually started watching like the first couple of minutes. And I'm like, I'm not in the mood tonight, so I turned it off. I guess probably some other cheesy vampire show. It's one of my friends was like, you need to watch Vampire Diaries. I went over to their, you know, apartment and watched the first episode. And she asked me, what do you think? And I said, we need to watch another episode. We ended up watching four episodes. Now, I'm saying this because this is my personal story. Everyone has a different story. But I went in as skeptical because I love vampires. And sometimes they're done really well. Sometimes they're not. My first exposure to vampires was probably Sir to Freak. The 12 books of that series by Darren Shan, which is really great. But anyways, back to Vampire Diaries. The characters were so interesting. Stefan was morally right, I believe. And his character was the one I most aligned with at first. Damon was this rude, you know, person that killed everybody. And he was just mean and ruthless and bloodthirsty and everything else. And, um, but... So initially, my favorite characters were Elena and Stefan because Elena was just this pure, sweet, beautiful woman, and she had just had a tragic story. And my least favorite was probably Caroline because she came off as overbearing and over the top and just too in your face, you know, like calm down a little bit and a very control freak too. Um... So that's how kind of my first impressions were, was that Elena was just this great, beautiful woman who was really caring and sweet, and Stefan was this down-to-earth, good morals kind of guy, and Damon was just this prick, um, and Bonnie was intriguing, um, Caroline being annoying. Now, and Matt as this nice guy, but the actor's great. But I felt like Matt, at first I didn't really appreciate him, but being the one of the only characters, well, main ones, that made it through the entire show without ever turning, really made me like him and appreciate him more as the series went on. Tyler was kind of an ass at the beginning, but as we got further and further, there was a reason for being the way he was. And then you have the originals that come in. Well, okay, Catherine. Catherine herself, I liked her as a villain because there were times where I actually felt like she cared, but she was afraid to show it. She even has fears, and she comes off as kind of this mean, manipulative woman. And she is, don't get me wrong, she is. But there was another side to Catherine that I saw that I really enjoyed as a villain, and it gave her character more depth. They had really good character development for most of the characters. But Nina Dobrev being able to play Elena and Catherine go back and forth was, took a lot of talent. I appreciate her efforts, too. Um, So, you know, season one, a lot of stuff happened. And I felt like the show was just so addicting at first. It pulls you in. Because I didn't actually start watching until the show was actually finished. 
So I was told to watch an eight-season show, and I thought it was a lot. But I got through season one in like a week, maybe a week and a half. And then season two, I got through in about another week. I slowed down a little bit after four. But, you know, there was so much going on. So Catherine was a good villain. The originals were great. Klaus, you loved to hate. You know, you wanted to see the heroes succeed. But Klaus, which I need to watch the originals next, also has a reason for the way he is with his family and everything. So he was interesting. I was really drawn to the Anna-Jeremy relationship. Um, try not to sneeze here. Hold on. But Anna and Jeremy had a great relationship, and I loved Anna's character. I wish she would have survived because she was nice, she was sweet, she was cute. She was kind of confused after she died that she had died, and it was really sad. And then Jeremy, you know, gets with Bonnie, and he has a hard time letting go. But yeah, Klaus did some unforgivable things. And Elijah tries to be the voice of reason throughout the series. Um, you know, villain-wise, my favorites are probably Catherine, Klaus. I wish they would have given more time for Ketsia's story, because she was a good character, but they did, and Silas. But I understand you got to keep the show moving. I really enjoyed it, and the fact that Silas looked like Stefan was really intriguing too. The fact that and I'm sure it was fun for Paul to play that character um, because he even said he liked playing the villain. But I really just love this show. Alaric is another good character. I really thought he had good development. And whenever they're going to kill him off, it was the perfect scene because he was having all these visions and he was going crazy. He was forgetting what he was doing. And whenever they had everyone come together to say goodbye to him, I'm like, oh my god, this is the best ending for this character. And then, of course, he gets, he doesn't end up dying, and he does later, but he eventually comes back. His character was, was another one of my favorites because he also has a moral compass. After his wife, he's on his wedding day, his wife is killed by Kai. Kai's another good villain, but I hated him. I hated him so much. I love the actor. So good at playing this villain. But that's the point, I think, of the character, is you want to hate the villain. So he succeeded um, in playing Kai. But yeah, it's very tragic with what happens to Alaric and his family. And the babies, their Gemini twins, are trans... Excuse me. Transfer over to Caroline. And then, they're, you know, they try to make it work, but Caroline just does not feel it for Alaric. She feels it for Stefan. I loved the I loved the Stefan and Elaine relationship they had early on. I felt like it was pure. And as we get further in, Damon challenges her. And like he said, everyone wants a love that consumes them. And you find out that Damon actually met Elaine at first. And when he reveals that and tells her every how he feels about her and then removes the memory, that's when I personally liked the Damon character. After that, my opinion changed on Damon. So the reason... I think I like Damon so much as he goes through the most change. He's the most dynamic. He has to go through and learn that maybe he's wrong in his way of thinking. His way of thinking is flawed despite the fact he does have good rationale as to why he behaves the way he does. Stefan, his character... He has the ripper part that comes out, but after he goes back to the moral compass, he gets a little stagnant, I think. Not his fault. The actor, Paul Wesley, is phenomenal. But I feel like his character becomes a little more predictable, but he's still a very good character. He has a big heart. He's a great character. So he's still in my top probably five. But if I were to rank them, I would go Damon, Bonnie. Bonnie is the most selfless, a great friend. She's always sacrificing herself. And I feel like she never gets that happy ending she deserved. And also, Enzo grew on me. I didn't like him at first, but then later, as you realize, he has abandonment issues for a reason. Everyone turns their back on him, and Bondi did not. And I hated the way he went out. Because I felt like he deserved that happy ending with Bonnie. And so, I didn't like that. Also, Jeremy kind of disappears. He goes to become a hunter. I would love to have seen maybe a even just a season dedicated to Jeremy as a vampire. Like, Jeremy 
Gilbert Vampire Hunter, something like that, where we actually see what he did. Um, you know, Nina Dobrev does leave during the show, but she's still one of my favorites. So I go Damon, Bonnie, Elena, Stefan. Number five, Alaric. Six would be Caroline. Caroline grew on me. So Caroline goes, she learns to embrace her personality. After she turns, she becomes a better character. And the loss of her mom was heartbreaking. Probably the saddest death in the show. And after that, I felt a connection with her because we all go through loss in life. And she eventually becomes stronger. But I do like her character. You don't like her when she turns off her humanity. Um, she was my least favorite when that happened. But yeah, th it was a good show. And the writers felt ways to constantly surprise me. Just when I thought I figured it out, they kept going. I wondered how they could do a season 8. Cade shows up with the sirens. And it actually ended up being a good season. My least favorite is season 7. My favorite is probably... I need to go back and rewatch it. I would say either 1 or 4. Because 1... Yeah, it takes a while for them to figure it out, but it's so pure with the characters. Pure at heart is Elena and Stefan, and I really loved that relationship. And Damon ends up with Elena, which, with the way they reacted to each other, I'm glad they did it that way. Had Nina Dobrev stayed on, I think we would have had maybe a couple more seasons at the most. I don't think they would have went longer than 10 seasons. I think at 10, they would have ended. But the reason I love this show is because of the heart, the story, the character development, everything they go through, despite it being supernatural, there is still relatability there. You can still relate to each and every one of the characters, and that is why I love the show. Um, overall, it's going to always be my in my top shows. I can, it's hard for me to rank. When someone asks me to rank my favorite shows, there's really... Four or five, five, we'll say big ones. Stranger Things, it's not going to be my number one, just because I love the show. Stranger Things is awesome, but I can't put it as number one. When I look at number one, it's always going to be between, I think, Pretty Little Liars, Vampire Diaries, and Riverdale. Just for their stories. I almost got to put Vampire Diaries as one, because Pretty Little Liars threw you in so many different directions, and sometimes it made no sense, and sometimes it was anticlimactic and frustrating. So I think I'm going to go Vampire Diaries, Riverdale, Pretty Little Liars. But one of those shows has not ended, so Riverdale could jump up to one. But anyways, Vampire Diaries is great. I encourage you to watch the show if you have not. The reason I fell in love with the show was the story and the characters and everything they're going through. And this small town, Mystic Falls... It feels like a town that everyone's been in. It's a small town where even it has its secrets. And I think that is why I really like the show. I'm actually talking about this. It's funny. A friend of mine and I are going to Chicago to the Vampire Diaries Con in June. Um, really looking forward to it because I want to be around other like-minded people who also love the show. So, you know, personally... I think it's an amazing show. I obviously always have and always will have a crush on Nina Dobrev. I love Elena's character and just the pure heartedness of her. Um, she means well and she gets thrown into the situations. And how would you react kind of thing, you know, comes to mind. Because you try to be empathetic and connect to the characters, at least I do when I watch a show. So I can understand where she's coming from. Stefan, same thing. Damon, uh, first, no, but then later, yes. But yeah, overall, good story. Eight seasons. I'm rambling. Um, watch the show. Check it out. Give your own opinion. But I would love for you to leave comments and tell me who your favorite Vampire Diaries character is, why, and also your favorite, we'll call it arc, because there are sub parts of seasons where there's stories going on. My favorite is probably the ghost episode when everyone's coming back from the dead, like the graduation one where we get to see Lexi and Alara come back. It's just heartbreaking, but it's also 
comforting in a way that they get to see these people who are gone just for a short time. They're reunited. So leave a comment about the show. Thank you very much for tuning in. I will have an episode three with my friend Dusty, and we will tackle Borderlands. That is all. Thank you.